So now I'm going to have a go at the first lesson or the first exercise in lesson 11 of Godility. It's called count non-divisible. Okay, you're given an array A of n integers for each number i a such that 0 is less than i is less than n. So for each number in the array we want to count the number of elements of the array that are not div divisors of a i. We say that these elements are non-divisors. For example, consider integer n equals 5, an array a such that the array is 3, 1, 2, 3, 6. For the following elements, a0 is 3 and the non-divisors are 2 and 6. So 3 can divide into 1 and 3 but not 2 and 6. A1 is 1 and the non-divisors are 3, 2, 3 and 6. So 1 won't divide into any of those. A2 is 2 and the non-divisors are 3, 3 and 6. A3 is 3, the non-divisors are 2 and 6. And A4 is 6. There aren't any non-divisors. Write a function that given the array A consisting of n integers returns a sequence of integers represented by representing the amount of non-divisors. So for example, given 31326, the function should return 24320 as there's two there, four there, three, two, and zero. Write an efficient algorithm for the following assumptions n, which is the length of the array, is an integer within the range of 1 and 50,000, and each element of array A is an integer within the range of 1 to 2 times n. Okay, so I think um, previously we did the count factors exercise, and in the count factors exercise, we found that to find a factor of n, we needed to go from 1 to the square root of n and each at the square root of n we have the, the fact the square root of n is the factor and for all values from 1 up to the square root of n we have two factors so for example if n is 12 2 and 6 are both factors they're opposite factors and then 3 and 4 are opposite factors because 3 times 4 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12. So I think we can use this technique to find the number of factors or divisors of each number in the array. So I think what I'm going to do is count how many times I see each value so we see three twice we see one once two once and six once and then for each value I can go from one to the square root of the value and count the number of factors and then for each value I'll know how many divisors there are and then at the end we can loop through and work out how many non-divisors there are by subtracting the number of divisors from n. Uh, I think that's fine. So I'll just prepare the method and then we'll have a go at that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is count each, count how many occurrences of each number we see. So I'm going to make a map and I'm going to loop through A, counting each number that we see. For each value in the array, I'm going to say if count contains key A. So I'm going to start off by saying C equals zero. If count contains key A, 
c equals get a so we'll get the previous count we've got we'll add one onto c and put it back into the hash map so now the hash map should contain the number of times so it should contain three and two because we see three twice then contain one and one two and one six and one so we've got one 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 two one six and two threes and that we should have in the count array now for each value in our count map so for int n count key set say we devise a count equals zero and now I'm going to loop as we did in the count factors exercise I'm going to loop from values from one value is less than or equal to the square root of the values that we're looking at well plus plus and if n divided by val is zero then val is a divisor so we know n is a divisor and also the opposite value would be n divided by val and that would be a divisor so but if n is the with val is the square root of n then it's the only divisor okay so i need to say if we in our count map if we've seen this value then divisor count plus equals the number of times we saw that value if value is less than the square root of n then we'll get the opposite value as well so int opposite equals n over val so if um, if n was 12 and val was 3 this would be getting us 4 so 3 is a divisor of 12 but so is 4 and again we can do this again but with the opposite so if count contains the opposite value divisor count plus equals the number of times we've seen the opposite value and finally I'm going to keep a track so I'll make a new map divisors count and that map I will use to remember the number of divisors for each value right so I'm just going to return null there and I'm just going to check to see if that's doing what I expect it to be doing So I'm just going to debug this. Okay, so we start off with a map count. And then for each value in A, so the first value is the 3. Count doesn't contain the key 3. 
So we add one onto C and one, and we'll put in the map three comma one. Then the next value we see is a one. It's not in there, so we we'll count it and put it in the map. So we've got one one and one three. The next value we see is a two. Again, we'll count it. It's got one one, one two, and one three. Then we see a three. It's in the map, and we've seen one so far. So we'll add one onto it and put it back in the map. So now we've got one one, one two, and two threes. And finally, we see a six. We'll count it and put it in the map. So now we've got one one, one two, two threes, and one six. Now we're going to loop through the keys of the map one, two, three, and six. So we we'll start off with one. How many divisors of one are there? So we're going to loop from one to the square root of one. So just one. If one mod one equals zero, which it does, if count contains key one, divisor count plus equals the number of times we've seen one. So it's one. And that's it for that. So we put divisors count one has got one divisor and it's itself now we see two from one to the square root of two so if what if two divided by one equals zero which it does we count the ones which is one values less than the square root of two. The opposite is two over one, which is one. If count contains key two, which it does, we we'll count it, that will be one. So now divisor count is two. That's the end of that and put that in the divisors. So we've got one divisors of one and two divisors of two. Now next we'll look at three. Uh, three divided by one is zero. So val is one, so we've got one of those. The opposite um, val is less than the square root of three. So the opposite will be three over one, which is three count contains three which it does and it should be two so divisor count is three so put that in there and finally we'll look at the six divisor count is zero for one to the square root of six six over one is zero for value one we've got one the opposite will be six. We've got one six itself. So divisor count is two, but now we'll go through with a value of two. Six over two is zero. Count contains two, which it does. It's got one, so now we've got three divisors. Value is less than the square root of six. So the opposite of two would be three. We've got two of those. So now we've got five divisors and that's that. So that's work. So there's one divisor of one, two divisors of two, three divisors of three and five divisors of six. So now all I need to do is make a non-divisors array and loop through from 
for each value of a. For i plus zero, i is less than a dot length. I plus plus. And the non divisors at this index equals a length minus divisor counts for the value in a. We return non divisors. That's going to return an int of a. So we want to see two, four, three, two, zero. Two four three two zero. Okay, so I think that was reasonably straightforward, but it was a bit tricky because of this square root thing. But we've seen how to do it before in the count factors exercise. So if you haven't watched that video, if this one's been a bit confusing, then I would advise you to have a look at the count factors exercise and hopefully it will make more sense. So that's the solution. Well, that's the solution I'm going with. I'll just have a check to see whether, I'll just run the tests. Yeah, that's okay. And it works for that example. N is an integer in the range of 1 and 50,000. Well, I think that we're this bit of it from the count factors exercise is being as efficient as we can do, I think. What wouldn't have been efficient is for us to, once we've got a divisor, start scanning through this array again to see how many times we see that value but by counting them in the first place that saved us from doing that loop within a loop so i think that the it's efficient and each element of the array is an integer from one to two times n well that's not particularly big so um, and there's no negative values or anything like that so I'm going to submit this and see how it does and 100% so happy with that well that's my solution to count non-divisible so thanks for watching